Morning, Kelvin. How are you? Good. Good. Have you decided how you plan to use your, your players tomorrow? Yes. Would you mind sharing with us? Uh, you know, one of the biggest things that I like about this game is a uh, chance to uh, improve our depth, um, uh, um, give our main guys, um, you know, we haven't had a bye. Uh, we haven't had our bye. Most everybody's had a bye week. So bye week's a little bit irrelevant. You know, since we came back from COVID, we haven't had any. Uh, um, our biggest COVID week was uh, uh, end of December. That was our biggest challenge. I think from um, December, mid December, then December, and then since then we've kind of gone at it pretty hard. Um, um, the other thing is this game does not count against the net, doesn't count, doesn't count against you at all as far as uh, NCAA tournament or anything like that. Uh, not that we're guaranteed a spot. We don't look at it like that, but it doesn't affect you there. Uh, but a chance to um, develop your depth, give those guys a chance to uh, play and uh, rest some of your regulars. We'll go to Chris Gardner, please. Chris, go ahead. Coach, after watching the uh, film of the East Carolina game, what did you see that you liked or didn't like? Uh, nothing that I liked, and there's uh, nothing. There's nothing that I um, liked, and uh, I disliked everything. So you come up with something, I'll say yes. Well, you use that. Was that Matt Musil from KHOU? Matt, go ahead. Oh, he's not finished yet, Jeff. I'm sorry. Excuse me. I think go ahead, Chris. I'm sorry, Jeff. Will you use Saturday's game to help work on things that you did not like from East Carolina? No. No, that's, this game Saturday is about uh, developing our depth. Okay. Uh, our depth had nothing to do with that game uh, Saturday. It was uh, our first unit that was the uh, issue. Um, but um, you know, Jamal Shedd, um, Cam, Tremon, J1, uh, Kieran, uh, Reggie, um, uh, those guys, you know, they, it's an opportunity for them to play in a game that, you know, this does, I mean, this, this is for them, opportunity for them to play. Um, you know, we've played um, 17 games this year. Uh, we're 15 and two. Um, so, you know, we'll, we spent uh, some time yesterday addressing some issues. Um, and um, we'll spend some time today doing the same thing. But, I, you know, I don't overreact to uh, any of this stuff that much. You know, um, actually, the, the idea for this game, I, I got it from uh, Mark Turgeon. Mark Turgeon, I think it was a couple of weeks ago, uh, right in the middle of uh, Big Ten season, Maryland played uh, Wingate. And I think there's some other teams. Uh, you know, this crazy scheduling this year. But, um, you know, I'd like to think coaches know what they're doing. So um, there's a reason we're doing this, and that's why we're doing it. And as far as um, the East Carolina game, um, you know, that's, that's going to happen sometime. You know, just uh, keep them to a bare minimum and move on down the road. Chris, thank you. I apologize for cutting you off earlier. Uh, we'll go back to Matt Musil, KHOU. Matt, go ahead with a question, please. Calvin, you've uh, always been a great teacher. The teaching moments coming off that loss and then going into this one where you're going to use some of your younger players, can you point to a few of those that uh, you're taking advantage of at this time? I don't know, but that's a good look you got going there, uh, Matt. <laughs> hey, you, you haven't even seen my – I've got my Fice Lama Jamma T-shirt on underneath. But yeah, well, that was 40 years ago. But I, Thank I you like, for your marketing I'm department. Look, I'm looking at your uh, – what, what baseball cap is that? Oh, the Astros. Okay, <laughs> well, it's, actually, it's a better look for you backwards. I actually – yeah, I, I well, worked out. Jammas, Fice Lama Jamma's cl touch of class as well. Um, uh, what, what was that you asked me? Teaching moments about East Carolina. Yeah, I, I don't, you know, it's just to flip. 
You know, it's, it's kind of like uh, teaching moments after we beat Texas Tech. You know, there's teaching moments in every game. You know, I don't, um, you know, we, we just got, we just got outside of our, uh, uh, our, our culture. And this is, you know, for us, hopefully it's a, uh, a learning opportunity. But yeah, yeah, we'll, we'll use it as a teaching lesson. But, um, you know, we, we've got this uh, game tomorrow. But more importantly, we've got the game coming up on um, uh, Wednesday. And um, we've got some guys banged up, as everybody does this time of year. Chance to rest some guys and get them ready to jump back into conference play on Wednesday. But yeah, we'll use, whether we win or lose, we always use uh, everything we do as a teaching lesson. If I could follow up on that, Kelvin, uh, how important is this game coming up for your guys like Tremont Mark? I mean, some of these young guys, when the when you get to tournament time, you're going to have to – these guys are going to have to, you know, really contribute. Yeah. Well, when you think about uh, – Jay Wan was playing really well earlier in the year, and his minutes have really uh, tailed off lately. Uh, chance for him to get some quality minutes. Um and some of these guys are still part of our rotation. You know, Cam. Cam is um, – um, obviously, he had a big game against Tulane, and it's kind of been choppy since then. Um, Tremont has had good moments. I thought he played well against uh, SMU and um, somebody before that. I can't remember. But, um, you know, all, all of our guys have had good moments this year. But, um, you know, just like Villanova losing at St. John's, you know, I was sitting there watching uh, Gonzaga and uh, Pacific last night. And um, a game was tied up around the 10-minute mark in the second half. And it, but, you know, if you play a lot of games, you're going to have some games where uh, you don't play well or maybe your energy level is low. When I was in the NBA, when I was in the NBA, the, the rule was uh, – uh, five to ten on either side. You're going to have five to, ten, five to ten games that you just have nothing, nothing uh, because of the schedule, and, and you're probably going to lose them. And then you're going to have five to ten games where you play so far over your head that um, uh, you're going to win them no matter what. And then you take, you take those games out as throwaway games, and what you have left is kind of who you are. Um, but, you know, we're not perfect. You know, sometimes, you know, when you win as much as we've won, a lot of times you get spoiled. Like, how could you possibly lose? Well, same way Villanova lost. Same way Creighton lost at home. So, I mean, ranked teams get beat every night. We're no different than anybody else. We don't play well, we can lose. Nobody, There's nobody coming out of this uh, program profess us to be a great team. We say we have a good team. Um, and hopefully every, everything that we do, whether it's good or bad, is an opportunity for us to grow. We'll go to Joseph Duarte with the Chronicles. Joseph, go ahead, sir. Kelvin, after the uh, the game against East Carolina, since then, have you? Oh, some talk? of you guys just don't want to talk about Our Lady of the Lake. Well, we'll we'll get to that one. Uh, <laughs> I was curious, just after the game uh, with Quentin, did you find out anything in terms of how how he's feeling physically? And you know, you kind of mentioned that he might still not be trusting that foot. Um, you know, do you have kind of an update on on where he stands? He was fine uh, yesterday at practice. Okay, um, and, and as far as Our Lady of the Lake, when when you um, just to double check, right now I guess you, no regulars will play, so you'll go with the eight, the other eight. You, you we basically play eight on on Saturday. Well, I didn't say no regulars would play. Uh, I know for sure Quentin and Justin uh, Bryson, uh, Dejan probably uh, those guys probably won't uh, uh, play. Um, Marcus may or may not, you know, he, he, I think he wants to, I'll decide whether I'm going to let him uh, tomorrow, but uh, those other guys probably won't, but you never say never, you know, these guys like to play. Um, so we'll, we'll see, but the, um, you know, my student um, reporter at the University of Oklahoma I'm not sure if she was the editor of the uh, school newspaper, but she's for, maybe she's a sports editor. Her name was Jenny Dial. And um, I've heard of her. You know Jenny? Yeah. Good girl. 
down Good, somewhere. Yeah, Jenny, yeah. Jenny's Jenny's uh, Jenny's uh, awesome. She's not quite as good as Andy Young is, but she's awesome. <laughs> uh, no, no, come on, Andy. How come you on, doing, Andy? COVID, man? Jenny's on another stratosphere, Calvin. Yeah, well, I, I remember Jenny was you, though. You know, we all started somewhere, Hoss, but I, but um, uh, we had four or five teams that we could have uh, played, and they all uh, wanted to, obviously. But uh, one of the reasons I chose this team is Jenny's brother is the head coach for Our Lady of the Lake, uh, Chris Dyer. And um, um, sometimes it's something as, as small as that, but I've always had a lot of respect for Jenny. And I know Chris has, um, is a young coach that's really working hard. And this is, uh, I'm, I'm sure his kids are excited and uh, hopefully our kids will be excited too. Is there anything okay. about, is there anything about their team? You know, I mean, uh, obviously, Kelton, Kelton, the the, le the levels and stuff. But what what do you see from them? From from just kind of sort of preparing. Yeah, they play a lot of people. Um, their best players, Munoz kid, six five kid. They press and they run. Um, Texas State is tied for the uh, league in their conference with uh, Coastal Carolina and Louisiana Lafayette or University of Louisiana. And they had a win over Texas State. I, I watched some of that game. Um, I think Texas State was up 11 with five minutes to go and found a way to snatch defeat from the jaws of victory. Um, but Chris does a good job with his kids. He's a good young coach. I, I, I like the way they play. Um, so, but we'll get our, we'll get the guys that's going to play, ready to play, and go see if we can't uh, get them some uh, game experience. We'll go back to Chris. Go ahead. Coach, how was the testing protocol handled with a lady of the lake? Have they already sent in their results? That's a good um, question, Chris. That's another reason why we chose them. It's because they've only played Division I schools. They have a Division I testing protocol. Um, one of the things their basketball program is known for is what a great job they've done with their COVID testing. And uh, we, we treat them the same as we treat SMU, who was our last home game. So um, Chris and the athletic director over at Our Lady of the Lakes to be commended when they've handled their testing. And obviously that's something that was a, a big um, a sticking point with us in uh, choosing this game. It's a good question though. Any more questions? I don't see any hands raised. Anybody else? Everybody else good? Andy. Andy Yanez with the Cougars. Go ahead, Andy. Uh, first, Calvin, just to reiterate, how me and Jenny are in a different stratosphere, Calvin. Uh, Andy. Andy. I remember Jenny when she was a freshman in college, sophomore, junior, senior. She wanted the stratosphere then that she's at now either. I remember when I was a grad assistant, we all started somewhere else. That's true. I appreciate, I appreciate the look at all these legends you're on here with. Matt Musil, you know you got it made when you can get on the Zoom call with your hat on backwards. Uh, Chris Gardner, just rock solid. Uh, Joseph Duarte, up and down the scale. I mean, you, you're you learning from some of the greats right here, man. That's a great opportunity for you. You're going to be doing this way long after I'm gone. I'm going to be going, you know what? I remember Andy MS. I, 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 I used to know him. <laughs> I appreciate the, the vote of confidence, but um, is there an update on, I know South Florida had uh, testing or, or COVID issues like uh, a few days ago. Has there been any communication with them if that game might be uh, delayed or anything like that? And is there an update on Cincinnati? Um, we've, I, I don't think I'm at liberty to say the dates on Cincinnati, but we've, um, I think the, uh, We've we've talked with Cincinnati. I think we have a date set. Um, I think we have the home game. I think we have the home game with Cincinnati rescheduled. Um, but yeah, we have the home game rescheduled, and we're waiting on the game there uh, to be rescheduled. And then with South Florida. Um, you know, I think it's just day to day, you know, we're just going to wait and see, but there has been no, um, we're proceeding as if we're going to play it at this point. 